dollars. We are blown away by your significant gift, not only with the most recent love offering, but your continued support of the Ministry of Church planning in the UK and our family, praying for you regularly, and look forward to seeing you in the future. Till the shout, the Stagner family. Amen. Over in the UK. Revelations chapter 10. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy against, again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank the Lord for reading another word tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another, another Wednesday night Bible study, Lord. Thank you for another another year you blessed us with here, Lord. I know it's been, it's been a tough year, Lord. Uh, if you tarry, Lord, I th I'm pretty sure next year will be a lot better than this year, Lord. Uh, forgive us where we failed yet. Remember the prayer list, Lord. People traveling, Lord. Uh, Miss Jennifer, Miss Peel, Brother Brooks. And all the un unspoken prayer requests too, Lord. Uh, forgive, me, forgive us where we failed yet. And most of all, you will be doing all these things. Amen. Amen. Brother Aaron. Don't forget, tonight is the last night for Faith Promise for the month of December. Get your blue song book and stand and turn to page 180. 180 in your blue song book. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful?
treatments yesterday and she's been it's been changed she's got pills that she takes every day now and then an infusion once a month so keep her in your prayers with this transition and change in her medication for cancer pray God to continue to touch and bless and heal her amen. amen brother Nolan is in the hospital tonight he went for some chest pains and they done some tests on him and said, said they needed to keep him overnight so you keep him in your prayers, amen, that they can figure out what's going on with his heart. I know he'd appreciate it, amen. Brother John's sick tonight, amen, not able to be with us. And the Eskimos are running with some sickness, amen, going around. So they need your prayers. So pray for them that are out with sicknesses. Good to see you here. Amen. amen. Last service of the calendar year, amen. It's a good, stop, good place to end it, end it is in the house of the Lord, ain't it, amen. White Plains up in Mount Area is having a watch night service. If anybody's interested in going, it starts at 7.30, going through, of course, 12 o'clock, praying the new year in at 12. So that's in Mount Area. It's about a two-hour ride if you'd like to go. Amen. There is a, a crowd leaving at a quarter till five. Uh, let Aaron know. And that crowd will actually be staying overnight because they got some dorms and rooms for them. So... Don't have to worry about driving back late at night. So they'll be traveling back uh, when? That'd be Saturday, right? Afterwards. So next year. They'll be traveling back next year. Amen. So remember that in prayer. Amen. So that's the needs of sicknesses that are people that are out of church and things that are going on. Can you remember Miss Lynette with her legs, Brother Brooks and his health issues? I know he'd appreciate your prayers. Amen. Anything else? I ain't missing anybody, am I? Amen. A lot of things to pray about. Thank God we got a God we can carry it to. Amen. So we're going to have some shotgun preaching tonight. Oh, go ahead, Brother Steen. Amen. Amen. New journey. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for them. Amen. Remember Miss Angel. Amen. With child. Amen. Counting the days down. Amen. Well, we're going to have some shotgun preaching tonight, kind of end the year off. We've got four preachers. We had five. John dropped out. Amen. He's sick. So. Well, it would give them boys more minutes. Amen. They just didn't realize probably he's going to have that many. Amen. And so, amen. You pray for them. Amen. And, and we'll just have us a good time in the Lord. Amen. Pray for services coming up Sunday. And it's a good time Sunday to start the new year off right. Amen. So pray God a blessing in. Amen. Brother T Ted, you come on and start us off tonight. Amen. So Ted likes to go first. When Brother Ted gets done, whichever one y'all boys want to go, y'all go. Well, how about we just do this, make it simple. Brother Ted started at front, then it'll be you, then it'll be Brother Aaron, and then Brother, you be last. Sound good? We just shoot it straight out, amen? <laughs> Sound man likes for to use this, amen? This helps out. Let me pin you up and got it. You want to preach, Brother Terry? Give us that seven minutes. Keep that seven minutes. <laughs> huh? Hey, y'all. Good to see y'all this evening. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Um, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day, Lord. Thank you for your, 
grace and your mercy on us, Lord Jesus. You've been good to us, Lord. I pray you forgive me for my sins, Lord Jesus. Just hide it tonight, Lord Jesus. Don't let it come out on us, Lord Jesus. Let your will be done here. Help us out with this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, y'all, um, you know, everybody, everybody wants to be different. Um, everybody wants to be be different, you know what I mean? I guess difference it kind of gets you, gives you a little attention. I'm different. I got a little attention on me, you know what I mean? Yeah, I people get tattoos. I'm different than the ones that ain't got tattoos, you know what I mean? Everybody wants to be a little different. In um, Titus chapter 2, Titus, Titus chapter 2, who, uh, <clears throat> these are, <clears throat> I'm going to ask a few questions. Who, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a trick, trick question. It's right there in um, chapter, chapter, Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Uh, who's, who's in here, who's in here is, is saved? Yeah, amen. Can I get a show of hands? Everybody saved? Yeah. Um, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Uh, did Jesus give himself for you? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Um, from all iniquity. Um, did he do it to redeem you from all iniquity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. Hey, <clears throat> did he, um, did he uh, do it to purify, to purify you unto himself a peculiar people? Yeah, he, did. he did that. Yeah, hey, that means that makes you pecu peculiar. You ain't you ain't like everybody else. Uh, when he when he redeemed you, you were made peculiar. That's right. you, you were made peculiar. Peculiar peculiar is uh, appropriate. Appropriate may not sound quite right for it, but that's the definition of it. And it kind of, it might kind of make a little sense in a little in a minute. Appropriate as being as as belonging to a person and to him only. That's right. Yeah. Uh, hey, when he, when we everybody ain't got this right here. We're real peculiar people. Hey, we belong to him and him only. Hey, Jesus, Jesus has got us. Right. You know when you became, uh, uh, you, uh, you know uh, you, are, you are his because of the way you are. Because of the way you are. Because people, yeah, people look at you and say, because of the way he is, he, he's got to be one of them. Mm -hmm. he's, got to, yeah. he's got to be, be one of them. Uh, you know, a, a, writer, a writer has got a certain style about it. And sometimes you can read a writer's writing and say, well, well he wrote this. So and so. Yeah. I don't know me the writers, you know what I mean? But uh, so and so, but so and so wrote this. So and so wrote that. You know what I mean? Uh, you you can tell by somebody's action. I know that's this guy down in Longburg. I got I do. I go behind a lot. His name Clarence. He's, he's a so-called electrician. But hey, I I go to somebody's house and I say I say Clarence did this, didn't? He? They say yeah. And I, I mean I know every time I have to go behind, I know who I know who it, I know who it is. I just know his work. I mean, and just like hey, just like we are, hey, we uh uh uh, uh the people are gonna know us by our work, That's by right. our actions, by what we do. Um, peculiar. It's a it's a exclusive prop exclusive property. Hey, belong to a person exclusively. Yeah. Hey, we're Jesus Christ excludes. Hey, we ain't nobody. Hey, we might act like we belong to somebody else half the time, but we're his yeah, yeah. only. That's we're only right. his. We're only his. Um, <clears throat> we belong to him only. Hey, and we belong to him only because of redemption, because he, he bought us. That's, right. That's why we belong to him only, him only. Hey, when you when you are peculiar, hey, you are you are you are abnormal. Hey, it's, that's what that's kind of what people look at us as being. We ain't right. You know what I mean? I wanted I wanted to use weird. But weird, when I looked it up, weird ain't got a, it's got a, a, a perverted tense sense to it. You know what I mean? So I said, I ain't going to put that per per perverted sense on Christians. That's it's right. supposed to be peculiar. Yeah. Hey, if, it was, if our God was Satan, hey, we could say weird. You know what I mean? Right. We could say weird. Hey, but we ain't, we ain't weird. Right. We, ain't, we ain't like that. Hey, um, at, hey, you are abnormal. You're special. Hey, you ever been called special? Every now and then somebody call me special. That ain't, you know, in most terms, it ain't a good thing, but hey, every now and then somebody call you special. You say, you, hey, you special. Hey, but hey, but, but most Christians, hey, but most Christians, they got a, it's, a, it's something special about them. It's something special about them. Hey, exceptional. Christians are, hey, you exceptional. You're extraordinary. You're out of the ordinary. You ain't like, hey, you ain't like everybody else. Hey, you, you're, you're odd. You're odd. You're, you're odd. You're oddball. You're oddball. Hey, you're rare. Yeah, a Christian yeah. is, is, a, is a rare. Hey, it ain't, hey, 
we got a house pretty much full of them in here tonight, but hey, but still, outside of this right here, hey, it's rare. Hey, outside of this right here, it's uncommon. Hey, outside of this right here, hey, hey, you've been called a Jesus freak? I mean, when I first got saved, tried to witness everybody, I was on a job one time, and God said, uh, oh, you one of them Jesus freaks, ain't you? I said, yeah. Hey, that's a, hey, but that, that's, hey, but I was, I, it was peculiar. I was peculiar. Hey, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, some, 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 some versions, they take out that, they take out that, uh, that peculiar. Yeah. They, they take it out because they, they think it's wrong for a Christian to be called odd or weird. Not weird. Golly, forgive me a little. Uh, but you know what I'm trying to say, rare or uncommon. They think it's un- it ain't right for a Christian to meet all that. But anyway, that guy, anyway, that guy, he, uh, he said, uh, you one of them Jesus freaks, ain't you? I said, yeah. You know, I thought, shoot, I took, I took that thing as an honor. Yeah, amen. I mean, I thought that was a good thing. I said, this guy sees something somewhere. Yeah. I mean, throughout my wickedness, my, my messed up lifestyle, he saw something somewhere that, hey, that, that, that said there must be some Christ in him somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when you ain't been saved that long and you want, hey, you want somebody to notice you. I mean, when my dad, when I first got saved, my dad said, you, you ain't the same. You ain't right. You know what I mean? You ain't right no more. You ain't, you, 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 something happened to you. I mean, but, hey, but that's a good thing to a Christian. Christians wants to hear that kind of stuff. Hey, because you're peculiar. You ain't like everybody else. You ain't like everybody else. You ain't common. Um, I, like I said, I thought it was an honor. Hey, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, you understand what I'm saying, but the world don't understand what I'm talking about. Y'all understand, hey, y'all like this oddness, this, this, this rareness, this, uh, this uh, uh, only Jesus only type thing. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all like that yeah. right there. I like it too. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like an ax when he says, uh, count, it to, to count, it, count it worthy to suffer for uh, yeah. shame for his name's sake. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's a good thing to suffer for Jesus Christ. Hey, that's our, that's our Savior. That's who died for us. He died for our soul. That's for our sin. Died for us. Hey, you know, <clears throat> uh, we, see, we don't, we don't run to the same excess of, of riding. We don't, hey, we don't do it like everybody else do it. Right. Hey, we, we're a little different. Hey, in First Peter, there's, there's something happened. Uh, there's, a, there's a change in us when, um, when we got saved. In First Peter 3, 1 Peter 4. Peter's kind of discussing the times before um, we were saved. But hey, but things different now. Things ain't the same. Things ain't the same. In First Peter um, four, three, it says, um, "And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God." <clears throat> and this is that spirit of Antichrist. <clears throat> I'm in First John. I need to go back some. First Peter. <clears throat> for the for the time past. Uh, for the time past of our life that suffice us to have walked the will of the Gentiles um, when we walked in the lasciviousness and lust, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, and abnormal, abominable idolatries. Wherein, hey, that's the kind of stuff we were involved in. That's, right. that's the kind of stuff we were involved in. Hey, if we, but see, we don't do that, that stuff anymore. So fo- folks look at us as, 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 as peculiar. Hey, I remember my daddy used to say, that's a peculiar guy. He won't talk about Christian, but he said, that's a peculiar guy. He meant they, they different. He ain't, the, he ain't the same as everybody else. Hey, um, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with the, with the same, with them to the same excess of riding, speaking evil of you. Hey, you know, they're going to they speak evil of you like, if you like that. Um, if, we, if we live for the Lord, our friends and people we meet, hey, they're going to think that we are strange. Just the fact that you live, hey, they're going to think we're strange. They're going to think that we're peculiar. Hey, they're going to speak evil of you. Hey, they're going to they gonna think, they're going to say like, oh, he thinks he's better than we are. Yeah, but yeah. we don't think we're better than anybody else. Amen. We don't think we're better than anybody. Amen. Hey, they're going to think, hey, who, th- who did he think he is? Mm. You know, that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. Uh, then they're going to say, then somebody's going to say, well, you can't judge me. Everybody, they, lo- they love that, that you can't judge me thing. Hey, wherein they think it strange that you run not with the saying to not with them to this hey you don't run with them anymore that's right hey he said to, with them I'm talking about the people that you just hang around mm-hmm. in the old days that's right. with the days when you thought you was having a good time yeah. hey them folks hey you don't run with them you don't that's do the right. stuff they do hey you don't cuss when they cuss that's right. you don't you don't you don't when somebody 
go say something against you, you don't just blap off the mouth and just do it whenever you feel like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't do, hey, you don't go drink when they drink. Hey, you might go drink, but you drinking some iced tea or some yeah. water or something. Hey, I bet you it ain't got it ain't got no alcoholic no alcohol in it. Hey, if you drink some great some wine, it's gonna be non firm in it. Yeah. Hey, it's gonna be Welch's. Yeah. That stuff yeah. Jennifer, Jennifer get from the grocery store, the food line brand. Hey, that's what, that's what it's gonna be. Hey, you you ain't run, you ain't running you ain't yeah. doing it the same way you used to do it. You're doing it a different way now. That's right. Hey, and because hey, they gonna think evil of you. You know, I say evil ain't I ain't necessarily saying that they gonna think you are like a like a horns out the head, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Hey, but if it ain't according to their way, it's yeah. it's evil. Right. They gonna think it's they gonna think it's evil. Hey, the world thinks that, um, that thinks that right there, wherein they, uh, wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riding, <clears throat> speaking evil. Hey, the world, the world think that's not that's not good. The world think th- think that's a not a good thing. Hey, in um, Galatians sixteen says, uh, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Hey. When somebody, somebody, somebody do something wrong to you, the world thinks you need to retaliate right then. Yeah. You need the world thinks you need to get on it right then. Hey, but hey, but the Bible don't don't it ain't quite teaching that right there. I understand. I understand defending yourself. Hey, but when the when the gospel, when when somebody's attacking you over the gospel, you might be best just let that thing let them attack. Yeah. Might be best thing just to let, just to let them attack. Well, James, well, James like the like the, and I like it. And I kind of. He said it sometimes, but he don't know that I like it when he said it. But he said, uh, he said that boy on the street, the big old boy was going to come beat me up that day. He was out of the street preaching. And uh, I was kind of worried about that thing, too. But, uh, but Bo James said, uh, the Lord, had, Lord arrested him as soon as he crossed the sidewalk right there. Huh? But, hey, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing that somebody's coming on to you because of, because of Jesus Christ. Hey, got to, got to talk to him a little bit. It didn't do, change much, but they got to talk to him a little bit. Um, in um, Philippians... Philippians, where's Philippians at? Got it right there. He said in Philippians 2 2, excuse me, um, Philippians 2 2 says, um, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love according. Uh, being of one accord, of one mind. Um, that's how we should be. Hey, everybody here has got, has got the mindset on the same thing. Yeah. I mean, that's when churches bust up when everybody's mind ain't on the same thing. Yeah, hey, the mindset is one accord. Hey, one mind. Hey, let nothing be done through strife or vain, uh, vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Hey, the old man don't do stuff like that. A peculiar people will do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. If you're peculiar, you might you'll probably do some stuff. You, you might do that. You might you might esteem somebody else better than yourself if you're peculiar. Hey, that peculiar means hey, if you're peculiar, hey, that's you've been you've been born again. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what God's talking about. Peculiar people, so it's people that are saved, people that are saved. Um, who 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 are peculiar people? Let's look in. Um, First Peter. First Peter. First Peter two nine. I guess I got first Peter two nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into a, into his marvelous light. Hey, we need to let people know who we serve, yeah. um, which in time past were not a people, but are now <clears throat> the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We can thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hey, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, um, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Hey, is it, uh, he's talking about a, what a peculiar people should do. The stain from the flesh, flesh of us, having your conversations honest among the Gentiles. Um, hey, uh, 
we're talking about we got to live right in front of unsaved people. Yeah. And that's what a peculiar pre a person try to do. A peculiar people, they try to live right in front of other folks. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that uh, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God, the day of south, day of visitation, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. Hey, that, I got to work with me sometimes. He, um, sometimes I want to go down the road and speed, and I got a bad habit of not wanting to stop at a stop sign. You know what I mean? It says stop, but me, I got to have him not wanting to do it. But I got to, I, but when he's with me, I got to start stopping the stop sign. I got to start not speeding. Just trying to, hey, but because I got to show, I got to show, hey, for the, for the, for the kings and the as supreme, you know what I mean? I got to show that I'm following the law. He goes, the first thing somebody wants to do is to get a reason to accuse our that's Savior. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what they, that's what they're looking for. Hey, you say you a Jesus freak? And you doing all this kind of stuff? Right. Hey, when you got somebody like that around you, you got to be aware. You got to be on your toes right. all the time because somebody's looking at you. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, 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 I say I ain't perfect. I mess up, but hey, I try to do right. Yeah. Hey, uh, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that. With well doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Hey, if, if I, as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, he, he, he can't say nothing. Yeah, amen. He can't say nothing. Um, as free, not using your liberty uh, for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servant of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Um, honor the king. That's a tough one right there, ain't it? Mm -hmm. um, Y'all kind of know what I'm talking about right there. Uh, servants, be subject to your master with all fear, not only to, to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Hey, uh, this, is what, this is what peculiar people are like. This is what, how peculiar people are supposed to be. For this is, for this is thank, worry, thank worthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongly. For... <clears throat> What glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. For even, uh, here, for even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Hey, Christ is a peculiar person. Yeah, amen. He's, he, if he's peculiar, we're born of him. That's we got right. his seed in us. We ought to be peculiar. Yeah, amen. Hey, just like, just like we, we say we got his spirit in us, we got eternal life because his spirit is, is eternal. So we got eternal life. Hey, he's peculiar. We should be peculiar. Uh, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. Hey, we supposed, this is our example right here. Right. Uh, when he suffered, he threatened not. Um, hey, he had the power to, to, to do something, though. That's right, yeah. hey, but committed himself to him that judges righteousness, who, <clears throat> who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, would live unto righteous, righteousness by his stripes ye were healed. Hey, by, by his stripes, by his stripes, hey, we were made peculiar. We were yeah. made different. Hey, long, hey, but the thing about it, you got to accept what he did. Mm -hmm. You got to accept his, his, them stripes. Hey, for ye are, for ye were as sheep gone astray. Hey, uh, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. Hey, people, <clears throat> people, um, peculiar people, they got to, we just got to start taking a little ridicule from every now and then. Hey, but hey, we taking it for the sake of Christ. That's right. Hey, some I, I know it's hard to do. It's hard to take some things, and sometimes you blow off the handle, especially out in this world. I, I've I've blown off the handle every now and then, and, yeah. and tried. But hey, but I hate it when I did it. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, but, hey, that's that's one 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 uh, uh, thing of salvation. If you do wrong, you don't like doing wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um. Just tell you, hey, Jesus took it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's saying a whole lot. The idea, the idea is not to lose your peculiar, peculiar 
How you said it, Brother James? Peculiarity. There you go. Hey, hey, that, hey that's what, that's a, as Christians, that's the idea, hey, not to lose that right Hey, to stay different. Don't, don't conform to this world. Hey, a peculiar person, he must be born again. Hey, everybody wants to be different, wants to be uh, uh, different than everybody else. This is part of the best way that you can be different from anybody in the world. You can be more different than anybody by accepting Jesus Christ as yourself. Hey, ain't many out there like that. Hey, the Bible says you must be born again. Born again is accepting what Jesus Christ did on Christ for your, for your sin. That he, that he died, shed his blood, hung on a cross, what, like the scripture said he would have, would have to do for our sins. Amen. 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 You know I like to take it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number six. And that was good. We're peculiar people. Ephesians chapter number 6, uh, verse number 10. Very familiar passage. We'll read it. We're going to read a few verses here. Ephesians chapter 6, <clears throat> verse number 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Brother James, you pray for us tonight. Man, I want to preach a very simple message here for a few minutes on what a Christian must have to fight. What a Christian must have to fight. Number one, a Christian must have strength to fight. Right. He must have strength to fight. Look in verse number 10. It says, finally, my brethren, look at this, be strong, how? In the Lord yeah, yeah. and in the power of his might. Amen. You got to be strong. You got to have strength to fight, but it ain't your strength you're fighting with. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not your strength you're fighting with. It's the Lord's strength. Look in Psalms chapter number 18. Psalms chapter 18, we don't fight the devil in this world. We don't fight with our strength. We need to fight with the Lord's strength. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Psalm 18, look in verse number 1. Psalms chapter 18, verse number 1. The Bible says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Hey, the Lord is your strength. Look in Psalms, flip over to chapter 27. Psalms chapter 27. God is our strength. Psalms 27 verse number 1. Psalms 27 verse number 1. The Bible says, The Lord is, is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Who are we gonna be afraid of? Who can beat God? Nobody can beat God. I mean, you ever had you ever had a jar in your house and you was trying to open it and you couldn't open it and you sit there and you tried hard and you had to you had to go to somebody like if I had to go to my daddy and say, Hey, I need you to open this. Yeah. Then they get it open, you say, Oh, I had it loosened. I sit over there all day and try to get that thing open. I don't want to go over there to him. I I'll tear the skin off my hand before I go over there and ask him to help. That's how some of us are when it comes to our, when it comes to our walk. That's hey, we're right. sitting there tearing the skin off our hands trying to do it ourselves right. when we ought to go to God and say, hey, yeah, I need yeah, some man. help. Yeah. I need a little help. Yeah. Hey, I need your strength to fight. Yeah, I can't yeah. do this on my own. I need your help. Mm -hmm. So number one, a Christian has to have strength to fight. Number two, look back in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. 
Ephesians chapter number 6, a Christian must have strength. Not only that, a Christian has to have armor to fight. A Christian has to have armor to fight. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 11, the Bible says, And uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He said put on the whole armor. Don't put on one or two pieces. Don't put on just this, what you want to. Hey, put it all on. You know what there's not any armor for? There's no armor for the back. You're not supposed to turn around and run. You're supposed to be pushing forward. Hey, God's on your side. You got God's strength. Don't be turning around and running. Hey, man, put on the whole armor. You got to have armor to fight. Number three, a Christian has to have a known enemy to fight. You got to have a known enemy. Look in verse number 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hey, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The brethren are not your enemy. The brethren is not the people we're supposed to be fighting. Amen. Every Christian has three enemies. Three enemies. Number one, the world. The world is your enemy. Number two, Satan is your enemy. And number three, the biggest and hardest to defeat enemy is the flesh. Your flesh, that guy that's with you 24-7, always trying to get you to do wrong, that is your enemy. That is a known enemy. You have to know that that's your enemy and that's who you're fighting. So a Christian has to have strength. He has to have armor. He has to have a known enemy. Number four, a Christian must have the knowledge and awareness that the enemy is going to strike. Yeah. Right. You've got to have knowledge and awareness that he's going to strike. Hey, whether you're fighting or, sit, or sitting down, whether you're asleep or awake, standing or sitting, hey, he's going to fight. Yeah. Look in verse 13. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand... Stand there for verse 14. I like reading that with that. It just goes with it good. Yeah. Amen. Hey, the devil's going to fight no matter what you're doing. Hey, look in 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Hey, Amen. He's going to fight. He don't care if you're sitting down. He don't care what you're doing. He's wanting to fight you. He's wanting to take you out. He's wanting to destroy your reputation. I mean, the devil's fighting. Verse uh, Chapter 5, verse number 8. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for that weak one. He's looking for the one that's got a little weakness and he's going to exploit it. Hey, don't show him no weakness. Don't let the devil see your weakness. Hey, you better have a knowledge. He's going to strike. Number five, a Christian must have determination. Back in Ephesians chapter 6, a Christian must have determination to fight. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 13 and 14 the Bible says, Wherefore, taking to you the, the whole armor of God, that you may be, may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hey, you've got to have a little determination to fight. Amen. you got to have a little grit in your crawl. you got to be able to, hey, you got to be able to put up with some stuff. Right. Hey, you got to have some determination. Look in 2 Timothy, chapter number 2. I know we're doing a lot of turning, hey, it's good for you. 2 Timothy, Amen. chapter number 2. Verse number 3, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 3. You've got to have some determination to, be, to fight. Hey, you're in a fight whether you want to be or not. When you, when you ask Jesus to be your Savior, you join the fight. You join the military right then. Hey, Amen. you've got to have some determination too. Uh, look at 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 3. The Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hey, he didn't say if it gets hard, endure. He said endure hardness. It's coming. It's coming. Hardness is coming. Hard times are coming. You need to endure hardness, though. You've got to have some determination to fight. Number six, a Christian must have the ability to man your post. Demand your post. Back in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 15, the Bible says, and, having your, and, and your feet shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Everybody has their own post. Not all of us in here are the preacher. Not all of us in here are Sunday school teachers or the deacon. Hey, you got your position. You have your position. Your position might just be a, a faithful church member. Yeah, yeah. Somebody to come in here. Hey, if, if you didn't come, who are we going to preach to? Who would the preacher preach to if everybody didn't show up? He don't preach to a pew. Hey, that's you got a post. You need to man your post. Right. Don't, try to man, don't try to man somebody else's post. Yeah. Amen. Man your post. Number seven, a Christian must have the fact of sure victory. He's got to have the fact of sure victory settled. He's got to have it settled in his heart, number one. Look at verse 16. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. You've got to have some faith. You've got to have that settled in your heart that you have sure victory settled. Not only that, you've got to have it settled in your mind. Look at verse number 17. The Bible says, and take the helmet of salvation 
and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that helmet, that helmet, you got to have some, you got to have the fact of sure victory settled in your mind, I mean, your heart, your mind, and lastly, in your soul and spirit. Look at verse 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hey, you got to have that fact of sure victory settled. I mean, like Brother Kevin said when he's down here, he read the back of the book. I read the back of the book. Hey, we win. Yeah. We win. You need to have the fact of sure victory settled. Right. Hey, man, if you, if you don't have it settled, go back there and read it. Hey, we yeah. win. Read Revelations. We win. Yeah. Hey, have it settled. Lastly, a Christian must have love and care for all Christians, for all the Christians, for every saint. Hey, look at verse 18. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. For all saints. A Christian must have strength. He's got to have armor. He's got to have a known enemy. Knowledge and awareness that the enemy is going to strike. Some determination. The ability to man his post. And he, he must have the fact of sure victory settled in their heart, and he must have compassion for all saints. Yeah. Amen. 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 Ruth chapter number 2. Ruth chapter number 2. What Luke didn't want to tell y'all was when he can't open the pickle jar, he brings it to me. So he just didn't want to say that. <laughs> Ruth chapter number 2. Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine. Ruth chapter 1, excuse me. Chapter 2 is good too, though, ain't it? <laughs> chapter 1. <laughs> Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. Ruth chapter 1, excuse me. The Bible says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. We see in this in passage of Scripture, may the Lord add the blessed to read of his word. We see that this uh, family was in the house of uh, Judah, the, the house of bread is what it was known as, the house of bread. They were in this place, and they fled. They left. The Bible says they sojourned. We've, talk, we've heard talked about preached about you get in trouble sojourning. Hey, you'll get in trouble if you ain't got a purpose in this life, and you're just bouncing around here and there. Hey, you'll get in trouble. You'll get in a bad way. Hey, stick by the stuff. Hey, they, hey, they sojourned. They got in trouble. Hey, but they left the house of bread. Bethlehem Judah was a house of bread is what it was called. I'm going to preach on this thought. The best thing since sliced bread. The best thing since sliced bread. Hey, they looked out yonder and they said, hey, that's the best thing. Hey, that's better than sliced bread. Hey, that's what they thought. Hey, if they wouldn't have thought, they would have never left. They would have never left the house of bread if they knew how good that bread was. They knew how, how much they needed that bread, how much that bread sustained them. They would have never left the house of bread. Hey, that place was in a famine, hey, but it was the house of bread. Hey, I don't know about you, but I like bread. I like every time I sit down at a table to have bread. I love bread. Me and we talk about that work all the time. Terry don't really like bread, and you can tell. But I like bread. Hey, I like, hey, I don't care what I'm eating, I want bread. Hey, but they think, hey, they looked out Chandra and they thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. Hey, sometimes, hey, I've heard a preacher say one time, sometimes the grass is greener on the other side, but it's either one of two things. It's either fake or it's on top of a septic tank. Hey that's, the, hey, that's the bottom line. It might be greener, but it's either fake or it's on top of junk. Hey, the grass ain't greener on the other side. Hey, I want to preach tonight. On, hey, stay here. Hey, stay in church. Stay. Hey, I don't know why God laid this on my heart, but he did. Hey, stay in church. Hey, we take the word sanctuary, and we're going to run an acronym of the word sanctuary. Hey, don't leave the house of bread. Hey, don't leave the house of bread. Hey, it ain't better out yonder. Stay in church. Hey, the letter S for the word sanctuary, hey, it should be sacred. Hey, this place should be sacred. Hey, that's why you don't let your youngins run up down the pews. Hey, why? Because this place is sacred. Hey, this place means something. Hey, turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 3. 1 Timothy chapter number 3. Hey, this place is sacred. Hey, I thank God for this place. 1 Timothy chapter number 3. Don't leave the house of bread. 1 
First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Paul said, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Hey, Paul said, You ought to behave yourself in the house of God. Hey, this place ought to be sacred. You ought, hey, hey, it ought to mean something to you. Hey, this place is where lives are changed. This place is where, hey, we meet with God. Hey, this place is sacred. Hey, it should mean something to you. You shouldn't just, hey, you shouldn't just treat it like, it is, like it's anything else. Hey, it's something special. Hey, hey, yes, it should be sacred. Hey, it should be up above anything else in your life. That's right. Hey, this place should be above your job. Mm-hmm. Hey, this place should be above the ball field. Mm-hmm. Hey, it should be above the basketball court. Hey, this place should be above everything else. Hey, this place should come first. Hey, what place? I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the house of bread. Hey, where we get fed. Hey, it should be above everything else. Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. Hey, this place should be above everything else. Everything else. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, the Bible says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hey, the Bible says, so much the more as you see the day approaching. That that, that day's approaching, but you look around, it's it's the opposite. Hey, people are going the other way. They think they don't need the church. Hey, you need this place. I need this place. Hey, they they say, well, I can worship at the house. You go ahead and try it. It ain't going to work. Hey, go ahead. It ain't going to work. He said, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Hey, you know where that, hey, you know where we assemble together? At church, at the sanctuary, at the house of bread. Don't leave this place. Hey, it should be above everything else. Hey, in, hey, it's necessary. Hey, this thing, hey, it's necessary. First Timothy chapter number four. First Timothy chapter four. This place is necessary. Hey, it is necessary. Hey, hey, you got to have it. You got, hey, it's just the bottom line. You got, hey, it's necessary. You know why? Because God ordained it. Hey, this is the way God set it up. That's why it's necessary. 1 Timothy 4, verse 13, Paul said, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. I heard Brother Joe Coley say one time, There ain't but one place on this planet where you can get reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Ain't but one place, and that's the church house. Hey, there ain't but one place you're going to get all three of those things. Hey, and, then Paul, and Paul said, till I come, give attendance. Hey, that means be there. Yeah. That means show up. I, not, I don't know, some of y'all might have had perfect attendance in school. I ain't never had that. Hey, but that's what that means. That word attendance means show up. Be there. Hey, that, hey, you, hey it is necessary. Hey, number, hey, C, S, it should be sacred. A, above anything else, N, necessary. And C, care and comfort is found there. Hey, care and comfort is found there amongst God's people. Hey, you start, you try to live in this, this Christian life on your own without a church in your house and see a family member die and see what you do. Right. Hey, see trouble come in your life and see what you do. Hey, you don't have nobody to bear your burden with you. Turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hey, this place, hey, there's care and comfort at this place. Hey, there's plenty of people in here tonight that can stand up and testify, hey, thank God for God's people. Amen. Thank God for God's people that was always there for me. Hey, don't leave the house of bread. Hey, when Naomi, Naomi and them got down to uh, Moab and they were sojourning, hey, and Malon and Chilion died, I guarantee you that she was w- wishing to God she was with God's people. I guarantee you she wanted God's people to be there to comfort her and give her a little bit of care. Hey, that was a t- tough time. It would have been a lot easier if she was in the house of God. Amen. Hey, she would have been a lot easier if she was in the house of bread. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Paul said, uh, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. He's talking about the church at Thessalonica. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech ye, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Hey, Paul said, you got plenty of love. Hey, there's plenty of care down at the house of God. Don't leave. Hey, T, the table spread. Hey, the table spread at this place. Hey, whether you here or not, the table spread. Hey, all you got to do is come and eat. Hey, whether you are here or not, there's going to be something to eat. You just got to come eat it. Hey, I just, hey, we need this place. Hey, you, understanding. I I hope I spelled it right. I didn't even check. Well, (laughs) you, hey, I might add one, but it'll be all right. You, hey, understanding is found at this place. Turn to Psalm 73. Psalms chapter number 73. Hey, hey, I'm trying to encourage you tonight. Don't leave the house of bread. Hey, don't go to Moab. Hey, there ain't no, hey, there's, there's bread at the house of bread. Hey, you go ahead. There might be a, t- a tough time and a famine come in your life, and it seems like there ain't no bread. Hey, you stick it out. Bread's going to show up. 
Hey, bread, hey, that bread will run out over yonder. Hey, it won't run out here. You, hey, you, there's understanding found down at this place. Asaph said in Psalm 73, verse 17, Asaph, hey, he was confused. He had no idea. You read the first 16 verses if you will, if you want to when you get home tonight. Hey, Asaph didn't know what was going on. Then verse 17 comes along. Asaph said, hey, he said, I don't know what's going on, Lord. Verse 16, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. He couldn't figure it out. He couldn't wrap his mind around it. Verse 17, he says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Asaph said, I couldn't understand it. He said, then I went to the house of God. Right. Hey, you might have a question, a thought come up your life, and you don't got a clue what's going on. You don't know why. You come to the house of God and the preacher get up and preach on just that thing. Hey, you get some understanding about it. Amen. Hey, you get understanding at the house of God. You get understanding on doctrinal issues, on anything. Hey, anything in life, you can get understanding at the house of God. Don't leave the house of bread. Hey, A, the adversary will try his best to creep in. Hey, he's going to try his best. Look in Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1, the adversary will try his best to creep in. Hey, we need this place. I need this place. Hey, don't leave the house of bread. Jude chapter number 1. While you turn on read Acts 20, 29, Paul said, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Hey, they, hey, some, hey it's gonna try, the devil's going to try to destroy this thing. Hey, he's going to try his best. Hey, he'll, he'll even use you if he can. He'll use me if he can. He's going to try to destroy it. Jude chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who are, who are before of old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, the adversary is going to try his best to creep in. Hey, he's going to try his best to get in here and destroy this thing. Hey, don't let him get in through you. Hey, don't let him get in through you. Hey, hey, stay at the house of bread. Hey, you know what happens a lot of times? The adversary creep in. There'll be some Christians that didn't let the adversary creep in, but when he got in, he let them, let them, he let them creep them out. He let that adversary, hit that avenue he used to get in, have nothing to do with them, but he, he'll let them help him move out. Hey, stay at the house of bread. Even if he does creep in, kick him out and stay where you are. Hey, stay at the house of bread. Hey, R, I like this one. Genesis chapter number 28, R, the Redeemer's there. Yeah. Hey, I thank God my Redeemer's in this place. Hey, God is in this place. Hey, I thank God my Redeemer is there. Hey, my Redeemer's at the house of bread and he ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Hey, he ain't leaving. I thank God for the sanctuary. Hey, I thank God for the church. You need this place. I need this place. Don't leave it. Don't leave the house of bread. Uh, Genesis 28, verse 16, the Bible says, and Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I know it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is, he said, This place, and what place he's talking about? He said, This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Hey, he said, This is none other than the house of God. Hey, he said, God was in this place. Hey, don't leave the pl this place. Hey, and why, last of all, I don't have a verse for it, but hey, it'll help you. You need to be here. Yeah. Hey, you need to be here. Hey, I need to be here, but you need to be here. Anything's going on in your life, anything, hey, when the church doors is open, you need to be here. Hey, hey, that's the bottom line. Hey, hey you know what'll happen if you want? Thomas wasn't there. Yep. Thomas wasn't there that Sunday night. You know what? God showed up. You know how much, hey, yeah, he got to see him again, but you know what? All them other disciples, they got to see him twice. Yep. They got to see twice when God showed up. Hey, I want to be here every time he shows up. Amen. You know how I can do that? I'd be here every time the doors is open. Hey, I don't want to miss one time God shows up. I don't know about you, but I want to be here when he shows up. Hey, you need the church. I need the church. Hey, it ain't better out yonder. Hey, it ain't better than bread. Ain't nothing better than bread. Hey, you need the church. Stay with the church tonight. Amen. Philippians chapter 1. Hebrews 11. Oh, can y'all hear me with it there? Yeah. I 
think I learned how to put that thing on that time. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Hold your place. Put a marker there. And then turn to uh, Philippians chapter 1. <clears throat> Would you pray with us, Lord? It's so good to be in your house. There was a time I, I desired other things that were not your house. It was worldly things. I was lost. And you found me. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God that's precious. Please help us tonight. Hide us behind your cross. And the Lord, may we see Jesus. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I did say Philippians, didn't I? Yeah. Chapter 1, go down to verse 24. Philippians verse... Go back to verse 23. For I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Right. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. That's right. And he's talking to the Philippian church. Mm -hmm. Paul's in, he's, he's in prison, right. house arrest for, I think it's two years at this particular time. And he, he was wanting to minister to this church and come back to them. Mm -hmm. And he had the assurance that God was going to send him back. Mm -hmm. And I think I got the wrong verse here. But nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Mm -hmm. And having this, there it is, having this confidence, mm -hmm. I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance. And look at this phrase, would you? And joy of faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. That's right. Did you have any joy when Jesus came in? Yeah. Amen. You know what? I, I've been down this road since 1974. I got saved. And, I, and, and I've been in places where there ain't much joy, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. But... Why is that so? Why, why don't we have joy? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Paul, Paul says, I, I want to help you people. And I'm coming back. I've got this confidence that mm -hmm. I'm going to be back with you in that fellowship, that fellowship with you. That's going to be to your furtherance. In other words, that's going to be a help. Right. And, and boy, we just got a message on being in the house of God. And, and, and I'd like to take off right there and say that the fellowship of God's people, I need to be accountable to you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but it keeps me on my toes and it keeps me wanting to live right. So when I come in this place, I won't, I won't be a hypocrite. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> there's joy in faith. Amen. Go over to go over to Hebrews, mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter eleven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the joy of faith, mm -hmm. the hall of fame of faith, mm -hmm. chapter eleven of Hebrews. <laughs> I want to show you some joy that's in faith from this chapter. Verse number one, look, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. There's joy of seeing the unseen. Yeah, amen. amen. Boy, we sure live in a day and time when we got these so-called scientists that they're trying to figure out where life came from, yeah, right. yeah. where the sun and the moon came yeah. from. And I want, to take, I want to take a Bible and say, here, eat this. And you'll know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Bible, the Bible is the Word of God. 
And we know. And you know what? When, when uh, by faith, I believe there's angels. Mm-hmm. By faith, I know Jesus died for me. Yes, sir. By faith, you know, somebody said, where did Cain get his wife? I don't know where Cain got his wife, but I know he got a wife. Yeah. Yeah. He might not have even been legally married to her. I don't remember if that was so or not. I know Adam was because God brought them together. Yeah. And they, Adam and Eve wasn't shacking up. Cain might have been. He probably was. Yeah. I wasn't there when Cain got married. Yeah. Stupid <laughs> questions, ain't they? I wasn't there when Jesus was born. (laughs) But I got joy from that. Verse 2, there's joy in having a good report. For by by, by it, the elders obtained a good report. I wish I'd have been perfect since I got saved, don't you? Some things I ain't got a good report about. I'm about as uh, stiff neck and hard head as you can get. Sometimes even silly. But you know what? When we come to Christ and we get saved, God says, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You, came to, you came the right way, and I'll get to that yeah, in just sir. a minute. Verse 3, quickly. Verse 3, by faith, let's see, it says, verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the world was refrained by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Mm-hmm. So verse number one, we got the joy of seeing the unseen. Verse number two, we got the joy of having a good report. Mm-hmm. Verse three, we got the joy of understanding. Mm-hmm. Understanding. I don't, I don't have to know, you know, all about science. And by the way, that, that book that missionary left and I got my hands on one of them, and thank God the preacher let, allowed me to get one of those books, those um, paradise books back there. I'm trying to, Pearls of Paradise. Oh, man, that's, that's a good book, folks. There's enough facts in there about evolution and about the flood and all that stuff. And you know, you know what? I understand by faith that God overflooded. <laughs> That he destroyed mankind. Mm-hmm. Right. That he destroyed all the animals. Mm-hmm. And all these anthropologists, and, and uh, uh, they remind me of Santa Claus a lot. They, they, uh, you know, they promise a lot of stuff and they ain't got nothing. And <laughs> you, yeah. They're out there and they pecking in. The, it just yeah. blows me away. Right. They're pecking in these rocks and mm-hmm. they take this little brush and they peck a little more and they, wow, I'll tell you what, that looks, oh, you know what, that looks like a mammal. Mm-hmm. I say, that's a raccoon, you idiot. <laughs> My goodness, can't you see that? (laughs) By faith, I understand. I have understanding by faith. I don't have to have an education, honestly. (laughs) I I get sick of education. Mm -hmm. I ain't never wrote a book and don't intend to. And I don't, and I, you know what? It's the hardest thing to get me to even read a book. Mm -hmm. And I ought to read more. But we got to understand how the world was made. Yeah, amen. God said, I think I'll make a tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that tree's pretty. I think I'll make a flower. Boy, they smell good. Yeah. And hey, look at that duck over there. He, he, he walks awful funny. He wobbles when he walks. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing no prettier than a mallard duck. Yeah. Unless, uh, you know, uh, unless it's some other animal like a cardinal. Aren't you glad you're in North Carolina? We have cards. Yeah. I was in Alaska. We had those. We didn't have mice and all that and bugs and stuff. My wife loved that, but she hated that snow and ice and all that <laughs> stuff. And, and, but, but we had these little shrews, you know, those little fellers. I'm not sure they got any eyes. And they, they take the place of rats and stuff. 
Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. How powerful is the Word of God? How powerful is God tonight when He can speak the Son into existence? And I know the scientists, you know what the scientists are saying? One day, one day the sun's going to burn out. That's right, when God gets through with it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Did you see that the other day? Oh, they got all that snow in the west, brother. And the scientists said, well, the snow's good for the land. Wow, they saw a little bit of good. They didn't come here. The scientists didn't say. Uh, actually, the scientists went along with what Job said. He considered the... the uh, um, oh, I don't forgot where I want to go there. The treasures of the that's snow. Right. Yeah, that's right. Why can't they see beauty like we do? Amen. We understand that that worlds were framed by the word of God. Look at verse four: the joy of having the right sacrifice. That's right. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. There's one door, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you're not saved, he's the door you got to come in to yeah. get saved. Yeah. So you got to have the right sacrifice. Look at, look at verse 5, yep. the joy of pleasing God. Yeah. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, he had this testimony that it pleased God. Verse 6 goes right along that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Verse number 6, the joy of believing God. Look what, look, I I think I got the wrong verse there. Yeah, I got the right one. By faith, it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Pleasing God and believing God. Verse number six. And then there's the joy of fearing God. Yeah. Noah said, yeah. Noah, Noah said he feared God. Yeah. He believed God. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Yeah. Yeah. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is by faith. Folks, i just give you the condensed version of this. But let me, let me close with this. Go, go over to Luke chapter 17. I, I want you to just see this and then, then we'll close. Luke chapter 17. <clears throat> I did say 17. Go down. Go down to verse 4. Go back to verse 3. Take heed to yourselves if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times a day and seven times in a day turn again to, to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him seven times seven a day. Look what the disciple, uh, apostle said. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Boy, when I see the joy of faith and what it will do, I just say, Lord, increase my faith. Amen. Amen. that preaching tonight, amen. I always try to tie things together when I'm listening to shotgun preaching like that, amen. And I thought about it. Procure your people, fight the good fight, which is better than sliced bread and brings joy of faith, amen. <laughs> amen. Thank the Lord, amen. On the other side of that thing, instead of being peculiar people, peculiar people, we could be what Jude said, we could be them creepies people. <laughs> Creeps don't fight and don't eat bread and don't have any joy, amen. Amen. I'd rather be on the other side, wouldn't you? Amen. Let's serve the Lord. Amen. Appreciate the good preaching tonight. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's gather an altar if we can. I'm sure the Lord's been good to you this year, and maybe you want to thank Him for it. Amen. Let's just gather around and pray.
Maybe something God spoke to you through the word of God tonight. You need to do something with it. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Let's mind the Lord and do something with it. Amen. Continue to keep everybody in your prayers, all these special needs. Pray if the Lord tarries and next year rolls around, we do something great for him. Amen. Please him. Amen.